This is a demonstration and discussion of the operation of a rear wheel drive manual transmission. The information in this video is applicable to just about any rear wheel drive <coughs> automatic or manual transmission. Uh, although this particular one is a 1992 Toyota Tacoma uh, five speed manual transmission, the, the R150, it really doesn't matter because we could be looking at a brand new uh, rear wheel drive transmission uh, from just about any manufacturer and they will have the same basic uh, components in. And so this video is intended to give you uh, the theory of operation, not so much the what's unique to each uh, manufacturer. <coughs> so to begin with, uh, over here we have the input shaft that your clutch disc is going to connect to and uh, that's going to give us power from the engine. Underneath here we have the counter shaft and since it is geared right directly to the input shaft it's, it's going to turn any time the input shaft turns. But notice the output shaft back here that goes to the rear wheels isn't turning at all <coughs> when I turn the input shaft and that's because we are in uh, neutral. Now if I <coughs> Excuse me, uh, zoom in a little bit here. You can see that we have four different shift shafts here, and the shift mechanism that sticks through the floorboard is going to come down and connect and operate these uh, shift shafts. So the top uh, shift shaft is the 3 4 shift shaft, it connects to the 3 4 shift fork right here to give us fourth gear or neutral or third gear. The next one down is the one two shift shaft and it connects to the one two shift fork so we can have second gear or first gear right here. <coughs> we have the reverse shift shaft so it connects to a shift fork down below that moves the reverse idler into contact with the counter gear and drives the output shaft backwards and then we have a fifth gear a shift shaft for fifth gear right back here in the back of the transmission. This could be a four speed if we didn't have the fifth gear uh, shift shaft. This could be a sixth six speed <coughs> if in the back of the transmission we had two gears instead of just one. Uh, seven speed, eight speed, doesn't matter. Uh, they all have shift forks, some sort of shift shaft mechanism and they also have uh, an input shaft, at least one counter shaft. Some of the heavier trucks have two counter shafts. <coughs> and then an output shaft. Um, I'm going to rotate this uh, transmission around and, and zoom back out. Um, let's just look at the front here. Uh, for a moment. You can see the input shaft right here. We have some splines. We have a little machined area right there. <coughs> Those splines are where our clutch disc is going to come in. It has splines of its own and damper springs and so it's going to slide on to those splines and when the clutch is applied, it'll turn the input shaft of the transmission. Also in the front, <coughs> here on this machined area, we have a pilot bearing that's going to fit right here, and that fits into the back of the engine's crankshaft. And it, whenever you change the clutch of the transmission, you should install a new uh, pilot bearing uh, there also. So let me continue uh, rotating. Uh, the transmission around to where we've got uh, the back of the transmission, the output shaft over here, the, the front with our clutch disc and our input shaft <coughs> over here. And now, um, if we zoom in, we can look at the synchronizer assemblies. Um, because manual transmissions, in order to shift from one gear to the next, when all of these gears are spinning at different speeds. 
So in order to complete a shift from first gear into second, second to third, third to fourth, fourth to fifth, and so on, we have to synchronize the speed of those gears, which means the speed of the input shaft and whatever gears it happens to be turning needs to be synchronized to the speed of the output shaft. <coughs> and so that's done with synchronizer uh, assemblies. And so right here is our 3-4 shift fork. Here's our 1-2 shift fork back here. And we have a shift sleeve. And then right down in here, you can see this little brass blocker ring. Sometimes it's called synchronizer ring. But the, the synchronizer typically is a brass ring. Uh, it actually has a tapered edge on the inside. In other words, it's not uh, perpendicular. It's, it's on an angle like this. <clears throat> and that's going to ride up against a gear that also has a tapered cone. And we're, the synchronizer sleeve is going to push that tapered cone of the brass ring, the synchronizer, up into the cone of the gear itself, this, this shiny surface right here. So we've got a tapered area here on the synchronizer. We've got a tapered area here on the, the gear itself. And the synchronizer will be turning the speed of the output shaft. The gear will be turning the speed of the input shaft. When you step on your clutch and we quit develop, or delivering power from the engine, we want to synchronize the speed of those two to make them be the same. And so this synchronizer sleeve right here will push onto the brass synchronizer ring and shove it onto the gear that's turning a different speed than the synchronizer hub and it'll either slow it down or speed it up to where it will match the speed of the input shaft to the output shaft. And so uh, let me give you a, a, a little better demonstration or a different demonstration of that. Let me zoom out just a little bit. <clears throat> I'm going to grab the output shaft right here and I'm going to grab the input shaft where the clutch connects. And notice when I spin the output shaft, and let me zoom in so you can see what's moving here. I'm just going to spin the output shaft. The input shaft's not going to move. Notice the only thing spinning is the 1-2 synchronizer uh, sleeve and the 3-4 synchronizer sleeve. Uh, the 1-2 synchronizer sleeve also happens to be the reverse uh, gear uh, that we slide the idler into down here to, to, to get reverse. But those two synchronizer sleeves spin the same speed and notice fifth gear does uh, back here also, the fifth gear synchronizer sleeve. Watch this back here. They all spin with the output shaft. Now I'm going to hold the output shaft still and turn the input shaft. Notice now everything else in the transmission rotates except for the synchronizer sleeves. <clears throat> so to shift from one gear to the other, somehow we have to connect those two shafts together. And once again, it's done with synchronizers. So let me zoom out just a little bit here. And I'm just going to take you through the different gear ratios um, of the transmission and show you the, the, the shift sleeves and the synchronizers uh, moving. And so on the output shaft here, I have a yellow label uh, that says output shaft. On the input shaft right here, I have a yellow label that uh, reads input shaft. And <clears throat> so I'm going to um, shift us into first gear. Now, typically when you, you shift into first gear, the vehicle is stopped. The engine is running, typically. But if your clutch pedal is pressed, that releases the clutch disc and disconnects it from the flywheel, which is bolted to the engine's crankshaft. And so the input shaft will stop. And so here's our 1-2 synchronizer right here. Uh, the shift fork that comes and grabs the synchronizer uh, is just, we're just going to push it back to the first gear position. 
maybe. Okay, I just shifted into first gear by moving the synchronizer um, sleeve back with the shift fork. I've got the input shaft label, the output shaft label. Uh, for this particular transmission we should have a gear ratio of 3.83 <coughs> to 1. So that means I should turn the engine or the clutch input shaft 3.8 times. So there's 1, 2, 3, and 3.8 times to get one turn of the output shaft back here. So that that is our first gear. All right, now uh, to go to second gear, we need to move this, the synchronizer sleeve uh, and disconnect the synchronizer hub from the first speed gear and move it over here to connect it to the second speed gear. But while it's shifted into the first speed gear, let me zoom in a little bit more. You can see a little better detail. We've got the synchronizer sleeve, the synchronizer hub right below it, the brass blocker ring right here, and the gear, second speed gear itself. And so the brass blocker ring, just like the piece I showed you with the tapered cup, this gear right here is going to have, this isn't the exact gear, but it's, it's just like it, it's going to have this tapered edge. And so when we shift into second gear, this sleeve is going to come over, push against the brass blocker ring, and try to uh, lock it to the same speed as the synchronizer sleeve, which is connected to the output shaft, which with your foot on the clutch pedal, because remember you, get, you have to have your foot on the clutch to shift, um, that should allow the two shafts, the input shaft and the output shaft, to uh, connect together and shift into uh, second gear. So we will pull that forward into second gear. There we go. Now we're in second gear. The output shaft is connected to the input shaft, but um, let me line up our stickers here. Here's our out output shaft label. Let me zoom out so you can see it. Here's our output shaft label here. Here's our input shaft with our gear, our shifter sleeve moved into the second gear position. We should have a gear ratio of two, pretty much two to one, 2.062. To one. So here we go. There's one turn of the input, two turns of the input, and a tiny bit more. 2.06 turns to one. And all we did was connect the output shaft through our shift sleeve and hub to the second speed gear through the synchronizer rings. <clears throat> okay, now we're going to shift. Um, out of second gear and here's our 3-4 shift sleeve and shift fork and so we're going to move to the third gear uh, position so let me shift that to third gear there we go we moved it back to the third gear position and now our gear ratio should be uh, 1.4 to 1 so Here's one turn of the input and about four tenths of the turn of the input and we get one turn of the output. So 1.4 turns of the engine to one turn of the output put shaft that goes to the rear drive shaft and rear axle uh, to propel the vehicle. Um, notice here for the 3-4 shifter We've got the synchronizer sleeve, the synchronizer hub down below it, the brass blocker ring or synchronizer, and the second or the fourth speed gear right here. These synchronizers, by the way, the material, the, the, the brass, bronze, alloy uh, material there does wear out over time, and there's a bunch of little grooves there that I hope you can see in this, this video. Those grooves wear out and it gets um, 
to where the synchronizer has a hard time synchronizing the speed of the input shaft to the output shaft. When that happens, if you keep pushing on the shifter, uh, you can end up with a grinding noise. So it grinds while you uh, step on the clutch and try to shift. So when you disassemble a transmission, uh, one, one of the checks you can do is to take a feeler gauge set up, uh, just take a feeler gauge and there's, with everything assembled properly, there's a, a minimum gap that's allowed between the brass synchronizer blocker ring and the, the gear itself. If this synchronizer ring is worn really bad, that gap is going to be extra small because it'll go farther up onto that tapered cone of the gear. Um, if it's in good shape, then you'll have a, a bigger gap uh, in there. So a lot of vehicle manufacturers have a, a specification for that gap uh, for you to measure. Also, I've seen some of these that just crack. Uh, the, the grooves have not worn out of it, but it's got a crack and so the whole thing just spreads uh, instead of uh, pushing and synchronizing the speed of the gears. So there we are in third gear. Uh, we want to move to uh, fourth gear. So fourth gear is this, this gear right here. And let me zoom out just a little bit and show you the so physical size of the gears. Uh, first gear is this giant gear right back here. Uh, and we have that gear ratio of 3.8 to 1. Second gear is this gear. It's a little bit smaller with a gear ratio of pretty much 2 to 1, 2.062. Third gear right here, a little even smaller than second gear, 1.436 to 1. Fourth gear on this particular transmission is a 1 to 1 gear ratio. So what's going to happen here is when we move the gear selector into fourth gear, right there, we moved our shifter sleeve up and in, we are going to have one turn of the input shaft. So here's our uh, label. Let me zoom out a little bit so you can see. Here's our input shaft label just starting to, to show right here. Here's our output shaft label in full view. But notice now we have one turn in equals one turn out. That's a one to one gear ratio also called direct drive. Um, some transmissions it's fourth gear, some, some it's fifth, some it's third. It just depends. Some of them don't even have a direct drive. It's just something a little higher than one to one or a little lower uh, than a one to one gear ratio. So that is direct drive. Uh, but this is a five speed transmission uh, that has overdrive also. So if we shift back into neutral on the shifter here, here we are in neutral, there's no connection to the output shaft. Now on the back over here we've got a, a fifth gear with its own brass blocker ring and, and shifter, uh, shift fork, and if we move it into the fifth gear position, there we go. Now we are in overdrive where we should turn the input shaft just eight tenths of a turn to get one turn uh, the output shaft. So here's our label back here um, and I'm going to just hang on to the, the clutch housing here. Notice as I turn, turn, the, turn the clutch, not the housing, the clutch disc itself, we're going to get a full turn of the output shaft before I can bring my fingers all the way back around to one full turn here. So we are in overdrive, we got a full turn of the output shaft but I'm still two-tenths of a turn away from a full turn on the input shaft. That's overdrive, which gets us better uh, fuel economy. Uh, on a six-speed transmission, some six-speeds, uh, fifth gear is the direct drive, the one-to-one -one gear ratio. But anymore, because of the uh, fuel economy uh, regulations, fifth gear, like on this transmission, is overdrive, and then sixth gear is a double overdrive. So it, it, you may have, instead of uh, the 0.8 to 1 gear ratio that we have here in fifth gear, it might have a 0.6 or even, I've seen as low as a 0.5 to 1 gear ratio, uh, like on a uh, Viper or a Corvette uh, made for really high vehicle speeds. It also gets you some uh, pretty decent uh, fuel economy, but uh, that gives us uh, overdrive. 
So now let me uh, let's take it out of fifth gear, go back to neutral. So here we are in neutral again. Now we want to go to reverse. And notice right here in the front, we've got a reverse idler gear that's not doing anything. So when we move to reverse, we're going to move this idler gear over and it's going to mesh with the one, two synchronizer uh, sleeve and the counter shaft at the same time. There we go. So we've moved that over with the, its own little shift fork. Reverse does not have a brass blocker ring. There's no synchronization of reverse. So for reverse, you need to be stopped to shift into reverse or it will grind. So now, uh, when we turn the input shaft uh, clockwise as viewed from the front here, notice the output shaft is turning the uh, opposite direction. So uh, let's see what the gear ratio might be. Um, there's one, two, three, four, and a little bit more, about 4.1 to one gear ratio uh, in reverse. And then we can take it back out of reverse and go right back to neutral. Uh, these manual transmissions have bearings that can go bad. Uh, they have some end play checks. Uh, there's selective shims that are designed to hold everything uh, in correct position. Uh, the proper lubrication type and level is important. A lot of manual transmissions and front wheel drive transaxles, manual transaxles, are using a special synthetic gear lube now uh, for improved fuel economy. So even though this is a 1992 rear wheel drive transmission, uh, if you opened a 2012 rear wheel drive transmission, you would see these same parts. Uh, about the only difference you see pretty much anymore is the one two synchronizer instead of having just a single cone uh, one two uh, synchronizer like this it'll have a dual cone or even a triple cone uh, synchronizer which allows for high speed uh, performance type shifts from first to second gear or from third back down into second but uh, on every single shift you have to go to neutral between uh, the shifts um, but uh, I was looking at a uh, 2010 rear wheel drive transmission that we've got here uh, and it's this exact same model or it looks just like this uh, except that this housing instead of being cast iron is is aluminum uh, so they're making it lighter weight to save on fuel economy this has been a demonstration of the operation of a rear wheel drive manual transaxle or transmission I'm sorry a uh, rear wheel drive transaxle I'm sorry a front wheel drive transaxle uh, operates just like it except instead of having the output shaft sticking straight out the back um, think of on a transaxle as this output shaft being cut off turned back around and headed around uh, frontwards here to where uh, it can drive the final drive unit of a front wheel drive but it still has the same gears, the same type of synchronizers, uh, same uh, precautions uh, during service work. Probably the most difficult thing of working on these transmissions is uh, you, it requires a lot of hydraulic press work and you got to be real careful as you're pressing these gears on and off uh, that you don't break the gears or break any of the parts because they are very expensive.